Good evening friends, welcome back. In our previous lecture, we are discussing about thrust requirement during a level flight, a case of general flight. Level flight is a case of general flight, where the equations of motion for level flight have been derived from the general equations of motion with some assumptions. Right? Now, let us go back to the general equations of motion. Let us consider this is your UAV acted upon by external forces thrust. Due to this thrust, the aircraft and you have weight acting vertically down and due to this thrust, the aircraft will move at a certain velocity, V infinity. So this is your V infinity. And once it start moving, there will be flow due to which there will be lift, aerodynamic forces, external forces like lift and drag. Lift is acting perpendicular to V infinity, drag along the direction of V infinity. Now consider a fuselage reference line FRL of this aircraft. So, the angle made by this V infinity with this FRL is alpha and in this particular case we see the thrust is misaligned with the V infinity or the direction of motion by an angle epsilon which is considered as thrust misalignment. Yeah. Now, consider the local horizontal here. Consider a local horizontal. So, the angle made by this free stream with respect to this local horizontal is the flight path angle gamma. Right? Now, W acts perpendicular to the local horizontal here. Now, let us write equations of motion like along V infinity and perpendicular to V infinity. So, this is your lift which is acting perpendicular to V infinity. Now, what we have from here is according to Newton's second law, the total external forces acting is it will result in the change of rate of change of linear momentum. Assuming the aircraft has a point mass and further these forces are acting at the CG of the system. Right? So, we can write the equations of motion with these assumptions, we can write the equations of motion along and perpendicular to flight path angle. Let O be the point about which the aircraft is rotating in this vertical plane with the radius R1. Right? So, the forces, total forces acting parallel to gamma is equals to mass into acceleration which is parallel to gamma, right. So, parallel to gamma the velocity is V infinity, we can write rate of change of velocity dv by dt here. And what are the forces acting parallel to this V infinity? We have thrust, component of thrust acting along V infinity which is T cos epsilon and this is T sin epsilon and this weight have a component perpendicular to V infinity and this angle is gamma, this is W cos gamma and what we have along V infinity is W sin gamma. Right. With this, we can write the equation here as T cos epsilon, assuming this is your positive 
direction of coordinate system here of the axis system and this is your positive direction of this axis system. So the fo forces along this direction are positive. So T cos epsilon is one force acting along that direction minus W sin gamma minus D is equals to M dV by dt. This was our first equation, general equation 1 and what we have is the forces acting perpendicular to gamma which is equals to mass into acceleration which is perpendicular to flight path that is equals to m v infinity square by r1. This implies the total forces acting perpendicular to flight path are L and the component of thrust minus the weight contributes along the negative, negative axis of this lift cos gamma sorry please correct it this is cos gamma is equals to mv square by r. These are the two general equations and now we considered a special case of this general flight known as steady and level flight which is also known as cruise. Right. So, what does it mean? Steady flight means the rate of change of velocity in this case is 0 or the net acceleration is 0 and level flight is gamma is 0, flight path is 0 and further we also assume that there is no thrust misalignment for this part, during this particular case. Now, with these assumptions, these equations G1 and G2 reduce to the following. T minus W into 0, T into 1 minus W0 minus D is equals to 0. That implies T is equals to D is my first equation of level of the level flight. Let it be cruise 1. First equation in cruise. And now substituting these conditions in G2 what we have is L plus T into 0 minus W into 1 is equals to 0. That implies lift is equals to weight. So, the weight is balanced by the lift and the drag is balanced by the thrust in a steady level flight. Now, what we understood is how much how much thrust my UAV need to have to achieve a level flight. Right. The answer is from this equation C1. Right. So, this drag is the system's output. Right. So, we need to which can be considered as the requirement of the system. Drag is the negative force that we can see here which is a requirement of the system. So, what happens in this steady level flight? This is your uh, reference axis and say this is your thrust and say this is your V infinity. Yeah. 
reference axis. This is your this is your thrust. And this is your V infinity. V infinity. And the lift acts perpendicular to V infinity. And drag will be along this V infinity. And you have weight acting perpendicular to local horizon. Now, the study level flight does not mean that the orientation is 0. Theta is not 0 in a study level flight. This is my alpha. You still fly at a particular alpha, you still fly. There is an orientation even in the study level flight, which is where theta is equals to alpha. It does not mean that the aircraft has to be, the reference line has to be parallel to the local horizontal. That is not the condition for level flight. The velocity vector has to be, has to be parallel with respect to local horizontal, right? We need to fly at a particular angle of attack. That is the whole idea, right? to generate the lift. Right. So, the orientation, the aircraft still have an orientation during the level flight. Now, from, for, for this level flight, we have thrust, thrust to equal to drag. That means, so drag is the requirement, if drag, drag is the requirement of the system and the corresponding thrust is the thrust required. So, this much amount of thrust that the propulsion system has to generate to have a level flight. right? So, we also witnessed thrust required is equals to W by L by D by C2 by C1 or C1 by C2. Right. This equals to thrust required is equals to W by CL by CD. Right. Now, the minimum requirement of the thrust can be achieved when you have maximum L by. So, why we are mentioning this? We need to know which power plant that has to be used. Right. Let us say if you are working with a jet engine for this UAV, a miniature jet engine, then you need to know which, what should be the thrust boundaries. What are the boundaries of your thrust? Right. So that you can select a particular power plant. Now. What is the minimum requirement of this, of a given UAV? That means your weight is constant of that UAV, yeah. relatively constant. Right. So, the minimum thrust requirement condition can be attained from maximum CL by CD. CL by CD max is attained by differentiating this with respect to CL, since CD is also a function of CL, right, and equating it to 0, which implies thrust required minimum is equals to L by D maximum. C D square into C D naught plus K C L square minus 2 K C L square is equals to 0, which implies C L for L by D max is equals to square root over C D naught by K, where C D naught is the profile drag coefficient and K is the induced drag correction factor, which is equals to 1 by pi e r. E is Oswald's efficiency factor factor whose limits are less than or equal to 1. Right? And e r is the aspect ratio which is given by b square by s, right? So, for an elliptic wing, E is equals to 1, right? E is equals to 1 
for elliptic now what is the corresponding drag coefficient for this l by d max condition it's a cd not plus kcl square from the drag bowler right where the cl here has to be cl for l by d max condition or cl by cd max condition this equals to cd not plus substituting this particular equation here say this is your equation c3 say this is your c3 this is your c4 right this is your c5 so substituting c5 in this equation what you have is k into cl square is cd not by k so this is equals to 2 cd not which means here this turns out to be cd not right so here the induced drag profile drag coefficient is equals to induced drag coefficient right in that case you can attain l by d maximum which is so in this case the drag coefficient is twice the profile drag coefficient so the corresponding l by d max condition or cl by cd max condition is attained by substituting the cl for l by d max and cd for l by d max which is cl for l by d max and cd for l by d max is equals to 1 by root over 4k cd not so l by d max condition is 1 by root over 4k cd not so it's very important you please so that's a that's the reason why we are repeating this lecture right this is important part of aircraft design where the wing sizing can directly done once you know the level flight requirements what you need to note down is cl for l by d max and cd for l by d max which is 2 cd not and what is l by d max condition which is 1 by root over 4k cd not these are not worth the equations right once i have this l by d max i can immediately find what is the thrust required minimum condition right this equals to w by what is l by d max l by d max which is cl by cd max this equals to w into root over 4k cd not right if you know the profile drag of your aircraft of your uav and if you know what is the induced drag correction factor you will be able to find out what is the minimum thrust requirement of that system for a given uav right of weight w this is again this is your equation c7 okay and now can we measure this thrust during the during the flight can we measure forces during the flight otherwise how to measure a force how to measure your weight by means of weighing scale right what does it have a load balance right so load balance needs a reaction force right but aircraft in space you can't get a reaction force there right so it is not possible to measure the force but you can estimate the force right so why we are discussing this you can't ask the pilot or the controller 
to fly at this TR minimum. Right? Rather, you should translate into a parameter which can be readily controllable or measurable, measured. Right? So let us look at how to achieve this TR minimum or what is the condition I need to maintain so that I will achieve this TR minimum or L by D maximum. Right? What is that condition? Now let us look at this equation C2. From C2, what we have is L is equals to W. That means the weight is balanced by the lift of the aircraft. So what I can express, I can express this lift as half rho V square dynamic pressure times the reference planform area into lift coefficient is equals to W. So the velocity, the corresponding velocity of flight is equal to rate root over 2 W by S twice the wing loading divided by rho into C L. Now, we earlier discussed during our initial lectures, right, how to measure the velocity of flight and we are now confident enough that we can measure the velocity of flight and can be controlled by varying the throttle, throttle setting, right, by varying the thrust output which means the throttle setting, you can vary the velocity of flight. Right? So, that is the reason why we discussed how to measure the velocity. Fine. Now, if I want to fly at thrust required minimum condition, what I need to do is, I should fly at the velocity at which your system's thrust requirement is minimum. Right? This velocity I can easily measure by means of pitostatic tube or say GPS with any one of this the methods that we have discussed right so in order to fly at the thrust required minimum condition what i need to do is i need to trim this aircraft at the cl that corresponds to minimum thrust requirement which is nothing but l by d maximum cl for l by d maximum so the cl for l by d maximum is root over cd naught by q so if we can substitute this here so velocity for tr minimum thrust required minimum or L by D maximum is equals to square root over 2 W S by root over 2 W S by rho into C L for L by D maximum or T R minimum. Right? So, what is the corresponding value here root over twice the wing loading by rho into square root over C D naught by K. So, velocity for TR minimum, which is equals to velocity for L by D maximum, is equals to root over twice the wing loading divided by the corresponding density at that altitude into K by C D naught raised to the power of 1 by 4 or 0.25. This is the corresponding velocity that you have to fly. So, you can ask the controller to trim your aircraft to this particular velocity or to adjust your throttle setting to this particular velocity to achieve the minimum thrust requirement for a level flight. So, if you increase let us say which is one of the major major phase of a particular any mission of a UAV or, or in general any aircraft. So, if you this is the amount of thrust that you need to generate right that means your power plant minimum capability should be TR. during the cruise it should be tr minimum right so the available power should be equal to this particular power right then you can fly at this particular velocity we have also solved for what are the velocities that are possible to achieve the level flight at a given thrust required condition right how we have done that so we have t is equals to d thrust required is equals to drag which is equals to half rho v square s into c d which is c d naught plus k c l square this equals to half rho v square s into c d naught plus k into c l is again a function of velocity right c l square turns out to be twice w by s or 4 w by s square divided by rho square into v infinity for raised to the power of 4 right 
since during level flight L is equals to W or since from equation 2, C2. Right? This is your thrust required. Yeah. Now, this equals to TR is equals to half rho V infinity square S C D naught plus 2 K W square divided by rho S V infinity square. Right? This equals to half rho V infinity half rho S C D naught into V infinity to the raised to the power of 4 minus V T R into V infinity square plus 2 K W square divided by rho S is equals to 0. So, V, inf v infinity square is equals to T R by W into W by S plus R minus W by S into square root over T R T R by W whole square minus 4 K C D naught divided by rho C D naught. So, V infinity is equals to this whole thing raised to the power of 1 by 2. Right? So, if you plot this T r versus V infinity, for example, for a given UAV, so this is the thrust required which is drag versus V infinity, you will have a curve like this. Right? And this particular point corresponds to thrust required minimum condition which is thrust required minimum is achieved when L by D is maximum. So, this particular point is V for L by D max. This is your V infinity. This is the corresponding velocity for L by D maximum. Now, the CL trim at this point is root over C D naught by K. Now, this particular case is when you have a Nuik solution, right? Here, for a given thrust required, you have only one velocity, which is the velocity for minimum thrust requirement. That can be achieved from here when this b square minus 4ac is equals to 0. That is, thrust required by W whole square minus 4k C D naught is equals to 0. This implies thrust required minimum this equals to w by w into root over 4k C D naught which is the condition for minimum thrust required current. Right? So, the thrust required during this condition is the minimum thrust required and the corresponding velocity is T r into W by S divided by rho C D naught. Now, we also witnessed, we also discussed, so this particular region which is to the right of this, this velocity region which is to the right of this vertical line, right, is a velocity for stable velocity regime for stable flight. This is the unstable velocity regime. Why? Because for a given thrust requirement, you have two solutions for the, of velocity. You can either fly at this velocity, let us say this is your thrust required condition. You can either fly at velocity v1 or velocity 
e2 right so which velocity you need to choose Do you, when you fly at bo both the conditions your thrust requirement will be same but which velocity you you, you need to choose right so that we have discussed earlier you can refer our earlier lecture right right now let us concentrate why this curve look like this right why there exists two solutions what is thrust required from c1 thrust required is drag for a level flight see thrust required is drag which is expressed as half rho v square s into cd that is equals to half rho v square s into cd not plus kcl square so please make a correction here it's cd not cd not right so this equals to half rho v infinity square s into cd not plus half rho v infinity square s into kcl square so we call this as profile drag and this part as induced drag profile drag is a summation of skin friction drag and pressure drag due to flow separation and as the velocity increases there will be another component called wave drag that 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 appears at high mach numbers right so we are not going to discuss about that now so we witnessed thrust required with velocity where is something like this right according to this curve so this is your zero now say at minimum at lower velocities right so if you want to sustain the weight we have another equation right from c1 c2 what we have if you want to lift this weight if you want to lift or lift this way or hold this weight at a particular altitude you need to have a combination of v infinity and cl right for a given uav if you want to fly if you want to fly at a required altitude you need to have a combination of cl and v infinity right so at lower velocities to sustain the same weight i need higher cl how can i achieve higher cl by trimming it at higher angle of attack right so at this higher angle of attack there is more induced drag because the lift dependent drag is increased right that means at lower velocities this particular curve represents the variation of induced drag with respect to velocity at lower velocities you have higher value as the velocity increases your cl requirement decreases that means you will be trimming at lower angles of attack higher cl means higher angle of attack right that means higher the pressure difference on the upper and lower surface greater the span wise flow and greater is your induced drag at the local sections span wise look span wise sections right so as your velocity increases your cl requirement decreases so this plot represents how the induced drag varies with velocity so this talks about induced drag and how about profile drag so profile drag is proportional to velocity here because cd not almost remains constant so at lower velocities it has minimum and as as the velocity increases your prof profile drag requirement increases 
right? Otherwise, the profile drag increases here. This is a profile drag curve variation with velocity. This is the induced drag curve variation with velocity. So ultimately, the point at which, see, what is this point? Can you notice this? Like minimum thrust requirement, we have induced drag is equals to profile drag, right? At this point, we have profile drag is equals to induced drag, and this particular point corresponds to velocity for TR minimum. This particular point corresponds to velocity for TR minimum. So what is this TR curve, white curve? At each and every point of V, it is the summation of profile drag plus induced drag. So sum of these two will be this point. Here sum of these two will be this point and this is the corresponding thrust required for V, yeah, thrust required minimum condition. The respective velocity is V R V for thrust required minimum or L by D maximum. Do you appreciate this? So this plot is nothing but overlap summation of these two curves. Now this thrust requirement curve indicates like the system's requirement to fly at a particular velocity, right? This much is the system's requirement to fly at different velocities. Now say you, you have selected a power plant, you have a power plant. Now what should be, with that power plant, there is a maximum limit of the power that or the thrust that the power plant can generate, right? So what will be the velocity or the maximum velocity you can fly with a given power plant? What can be the maximum velocity during level flight? Of a given UAV. When you say given UAV, you have weight fixed, planform area fixed, right? And the power plant is fixed, which means the maximum and the minimum thrust that it can generate is fixed, right? So, in this case, the thrust available is the thrust generated by the engine. So this condition is possible when thrust available is equals to thrust required. So this condition can be attained when thrust available is equals to thrust required. That means you need to, you will be, so this is the maximum thrust that the system can generate. So thrust available max is equals to thrust required, right? That means you are utilizing the entire thrust that is produced by the power plant so when, when you have such a requirement, this thrust required is equals to drag, which is half rho V infinity square S into CD naught plus KCL square. Right? So if this is the maximum available thing, you will end up flying at this maximum velocity. right? Because at higher velocities, your CL requirement is very less. From L is equals to W, you know half rho v square S C L which we just discussed. So at higher velocities, you need very less C L to achieve a level flight. So that means if you are utilizing the maximum output of the your power plant, that means you are actually traveling at the maximum possible velocity for a level flight for that particular U A. Right? So how the curve looks like. So this say this is the thrust available by the power plant. Say jet engine. When you talk about thrust, it is like we are discussing about jet aircrafts, jet powered aircrafts. Right? So the thrust available at a given altitude more or less remains constant with velocity. If this thrust available is equal to thrust required, this is the point where the thrust required curve and thrust available available curve coincides, right? This is your thrust available and this is your thrust required. So this point coincides. So the corresponding velocity of 
flight will be the maximum v max so can we find that point from this equation what you need to do you need to replace tr with t available and take the positive sign of this you will reach this particular point right so this sign this point will be negative sign of that right yes so replace the tr by ta to get the maximum velocity in level flight is thrust available by weight into wing loading plus or minus plus w by s into root over thrust available square max see this thrust available is thrust available maximum by w square right minus 4k cd not which are constant divided by rho cd not so at a given altitude if you are used utilizing the maximum available thrust then you are flying at the maximum velocity raised to the power of 1 by thank you right? so this is the condition for maximum velocity that you can attain so what about the minimum velocity so we have discussed this is our minimum velocity of flight right but let us see when can we attain this minimum velocity let us look at look at this minimum velocity further close we have l is equals to w for level flight from c to this equals to half rho v square s into cl is equals to w the controller should give a achievable figures as an output right it's not that it should not demand from the system which is out of its limits why we are doing this exercise we want to figure out what are the maximum and minimum limits of this velocity so that the controller can play in between that numbers right so it can demand the system only within that range which is feasible right now from the level flight condition we have half rho v square scl is equals to w right so if you want to see the minimum velocity then you have to fly at the maximum possible cl right so what is the maximum possible cl say cl versus alpha how can we achieve cl different cl we know cl is equals to cl not plus cl alpha into alpha in the linear regime so maximum alpha you will get maximum cl because cl alpha is constant for a given <coughs> wing or once you have an aerofoil and you have made the wing out of that aerofoil then cl alpha remains constant and cl not is constant again so alpha is the variable here you can trim at different angle of attack and achieve different cl so what is the maximum alpha that you can fly the answer is stall angle of attack right so during our introductory lectures so we discussed about a point called cl max where which is attained at an angle of attack called alpha stall what happens beyond this stall is what is angle of attack here like so the orientation of this with respect to flow right so during this condition as the alpha increases the flow tries to separate so the pressure distribution whatever which was responsible for generating lift vanishes right so if if the flow separates what happens is the lift drastically decreases beyond this point the lift drastically decreases and drag increases at the same time right so this particular point corresponds to cl max and the corresponding angle is known as alpha stall so we can't the one condition is that your cl should not cross this cl max right for a so during level flight so the minimum velocity is constrained by cl max as well 
higher the value of CL, minimum this VL velocity required. Now, the maximum or the upper limit of the CL is the CL max here, which is obtained at alpha star. So, the CL max, I can write it assuming a linearity here, linear relationship, although it is not, but for the time being, let us assume it is a linear thing, like CL alpha into alpha star. Although it is not linear, we still, let us assume it for the time being. Right. So, what you have here is the corresponding velocity at which the CL is max is known as V star. V is equals to square root of twice W by S by rho into CL. Now, if you say this is your maximum CL which is obtained by alpha stall and the corresponding va velocity of flight is known as stall velocity. Right. This equation is C8, if I am not wrong. This one is C8. Okay. Let us name it as C8 and let this be C9. This is a cruise, equation 9 in cruise for this lecture. The question is, which one is the minimum velocity? Is V minimum, V for TR minimum is the minimum velocity or what, or V stall is the minimum velocity? This is the unstable region for flight, right? This is the velocity region for unstable flight. But we want a stable flight. So, this is the minimum velocity from this curve. But we have V stall which is obtained from the aerodynamics. Right. When we trim the aircraft at CL max, you will get the corresponding stall velocity. Now, which one we need to consider as the limit, lower limit? There is an ambiguity, right? Now, if V max or V for thrust required minimum, uh, that is nothing but the minimum velocity for level flight, right, which is equals to V minimum is less than V stall, right? Otherwise, this V velocity for thrust required minimum is less than V stall, less than V stall. Then, minimum velocity during cruise is equals to V stall, right? What does it mean? So, we have a stall velocity here, right? Say so, this is your stall velocity, V stall in the first case. So, V TR minimum is less than V stall. This is a point, okay. This is higher than this V stall, right? Yeah. Sorry, V stall is higher than V TR minimum. Now, you should consider the minimum velocity of flight from here. So, this is a regime that which in which you can fly. Why? Because if you fly at this velocity, you, you can't attain the required CL because it will stall beyond this angle of attack. Now, this particular regime corresponds to stable region of flight, which you can give, give as the limits for velocity for your controller. Now, say if V stall is here, somewhere here, say this is your V stall, right? So, which one you need to choose? If V T R minimum is greater than V stall, right? What will be the minimum velocity? V minimum is V T R thrust required. Why? Because so this falls to the this V stall velocity lies in the unstable region of flight. This is a velocity for unstable region of flight. So, we can't fly at this particular velocity. So, that's why we can consider this as the minimum velocity in that case. So, these are the conditions for minimum and maximum velocity for a jet aircraft. If you are planning to build a UAV by using a mini jet aircraft, mini jet engine. So, but most often we see a UAVs with propeller driven aircraft, right? So, now we need to understand the requirements of a propeller driven aircraft. So, when you have a propeller driven aircraft, which is for a propeller driven aircraft,
this is a typical propeller driven aircraft where this propulsion system may, can be either electric powered or fuel powered system or IC engine. IC engine yeah. system. Right. So, in either the case, you input energy and the output in this case is mechanical power called shaft power here, PS. You will get mechanical power. Right. Now, you need to convert this mechanical power to the useful power for your case to propel the aircraft forward. Right. So, how you are doing it? You are trying to convert this shaft power to available power power available right? by means of this propeller. So, this power available will helps you to achieve different velocities when you want to use a propeller driven aircraft or when you want to build a propeller driven UAV. So, this power available is equals to shaft power times sorry shaft power times the propeller efficiency. Eta P stands for propeller efficiency. Eta P stands for propeller So, how to se select a particular power plant for a UAV? We need to understand the power requirement for various phases, right? Then we will select, okay, what will be the output of this particular thing and multiplied by this efficiency will give the corresponding available power, right? So, if, uh, if this available power falls within the limits or the falls within the requirement of your system that is a power required, then you will be I mean, you will you can achieve the required flight condition using that particular propulsion system. Now, what will be the, see again, you can't measure power on board, right? You can estimate, but you can't measure. So, again, we need to talk about what will be the velocity of flight in order to achieve the minimum power or the what is the minimum power that is required to have a level flight for a given UAV, right? Now, let us look at that case. So, from C1. From C1, what we have is power required or thrust required is equals to drag. This implies power required is equals to thrust required into velocity, thrust into force into velocity. This implies, so this is your equation C10. So, power required is equals to drag into, thrust required is drag from this equation which is C1 into velocity. So, power required is drag into velocity. So, this is the requirement of the system. This equals to half rho V infinity Q S into C D. So, power required is equals to half rho V infinity Q S into C D is C D naught plus K C L square and this implies power required of this UAV is half rho V infinity Q S into C D naught plus K into what is C L? 4 W square by rho square S square V infinity, v infinity square, no? v, v infinity raised to the power of 4. Since from C2, L is equals to double, right? C2 is L is equals to double. The, this implies half row 
half rho s c d naught into the infinity raised to the power of 4 minus minus p r into v infinity right? p r into v infinity plus 2k w square by rho s is equals to zero. This equation represents the relationship between velocity of light and the corresponding power requirement. So this doesn't have a closed form solution. So you can't you can't obtain the solution analytically. So the met, the general procedure that is adapted is by using graphical approach. Power with velocity. So, for a propeller driven aircraft, power required varies with velocity, right? This is how it typically looks like. And power available from the power plant almost remains constant, right? So, this particular intersection point will help you to figure out what is the corresponding maximum velocity that you can fly during level flight, right? And again, the minimum velocity that we have already discussed. But can we obtain this minimum velocity the minimum velocity for a propeller driven aircraft will also follow the similar concept of jet aircraft. Right? So, this is the power required minimum when you, then the corresponding velocity is V for PR minimum. So, how to obtain this plot? We need to follow certain steps here. So, steps for this graphical approach. Uh, first one is to choose a V infinity of interest, right? Choose a particular V infinity of interest. And now, Calculate corresponding CL of this flight by CL is equals to 2W by S by rho V square. You know the altitude of flight and for a given a UAV at the required velocity you can find out the corresponding CL. This is from C1, equation C1. Now, calculate CD is a drag coefficient. How do you calculate CD is equals to CD naught plus KCL square, right? Find the corresponding drag associated with the UL at this particular velocity corresponding drag d is equals to half rho v square s into c d right because for a given u a c d naught and k are constant the c l is a variable which you can obtain once you know the velocity for the level flight right once you know CL, you can substitute in this drag polar to find out what is CD. Once you have CD, you can find out the corresponding drag. Now, once you have the drag, you can find out what is the corresponding power required. Power required is equals to drag into velocity. So, for each and every iteration, by changing different for velocity, you will end up having different PR. That means every iteration will get you different points right so these points are the coordinates of this curve each point corresponds to v comma pr corresponding pr right once you have this you can plot this curve can we figure out this minimum power requirement analytically 
what we have power required is equals to thrust required into velocity right what is thrust thrust required w by l by d into velocity what is w by l by w by cl by cd velocity is also a function of cl since l is equals to w v infinity is equals to root over twice wing loading by rho into cl if you substitute that here what you have is 2 into w by s by rho into cl power cl right to the power of 1 by 2 this implies power required is equals to square root over 2 w cube divided by rho s into cd by cl power 3 by 2 this implies power required if you want the minimum power required condition what you need to have is rho s into 1 by cl power 3 by 2 by cd maximum so the minimum power required of this uav can be obtained when you have cl power 3 by 2 by cd maximum condition so let us see how to what is the corresponding cl power 3 by 2 by cd maximum condition what is cl power 3 by 2 by cd max that can be obtained by differentiating this cl power 3 by 2 by cd with cl and equating it to zero this implies 3 by 2 cl power 1 by 2 into cd which is cd not plus kcl square minus 2 cl 2k cl power 3 by 2 into cl this is 3 by 2 into cl power 5 by 2 is equals to zero divided by cd square this equals to Three, three CD naught plus KCL square is equal to minus four KCL square is equals to zero. Am I correct? CL square plus CL the CL power five by two is CL square into CL power one by two, right? X power A into X power B, X power A plus B. This equals C L square is equals to three C D naught by K. That implies C L, which implies C L for C L power three by two by C D max is equals to root over three C D naught by K. This is your Which equation is C10? This is C10. This is C11. Consider this as C12. Right? What will be the corresponding CD? What is the corresponding CD for CL power three by two by CD maximum? C D naught plus K 
CL square where the CL should be CL power 3 by 2 by CD max condition. This equals to CD naught plus K into CL square for the CL power 3 by 2 by CD max is 3 CD naught by K which turns out to be CD for CL power 3 by 2 by CD max is equals to CD naught plus 3 CD naught which is equals to 4 CD naught. So, here if you observe the induced drag is 3 times the profile drag. You consider this as C C13. So, what is CL power 3 by 2 by CD max? This equals to what is CL here? 3 CD naught by K, 3 CD naught by K raised to the power of 3 by 4 divided by this is 4 CD naught. This equals to by 4. So, 3 cube into C D naught cube divided by 4 power 4 4 raised to the power of 4 into k cube into C D naught to the power of 4. So this equals to 3 cube is 27 by 16 16 is 256, 256 into divided by k cube into c d naught raised to the power of 1 by 4. This is your C L power 3 by 2 by C D max condition. You can note it down as equation C 13, C 13, 14, C 14, yes, equation C 14. Now substitute this condition here, this power required, can you, can you uh, recall this equation, what is power required, minimum is equals to 2 w by w, w cube. 2 w cube divided by rho s, rho s 1 by c l power 3 by 2 by c d max. This equals to square root or 2 w cube by rho s into 256 k cube into C D naught by 27 raised to the power of 1 by 4. This is your minimum power requirement of the system. So, you can estimate this minimum power requirement when you have the induced drag correction factor which can be calculated by means of planform geometry which is a I mean planform geometry given a planform geometry and Oswald's efficiency as well as profile drag coefficient and the weight of the aircraft as well as planform area. Right? So, once you have these parameters you will get you can estimate what is the minimum power required. So, this particular minimum power required corresponds to this condition. So, again we need to tell the controller that you have to fly at this particular velocity to achieve this minimum power requirement condition right we can't we can't we can't measure this power required on flight but rather we can measure we have to convert this power required minimum condition to the measurable variable right so velocity is one of the measurable variable variable here and the corresponding velocity for this condition is using c2 you can estimate right so velocity for power requirement minimum 
is equals to root over 2w by s by rho into cl for power requirement minimum pr minimum which is equals to square root over twice w by s divided by rho into cl for cl power 3 by 2 by cd maximum that implies velocity for minimum power requirement of a propeller driven uav is equals to square root over 2 w by s by rho into root over 3 cd naught by k this equals to square root over 2 w by s by rho into k by 3 cd naught raised to the power of so this is the corresponding velocity for this level flight when you are using a propeller engine so let this equation be c 15 okay 